Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. For this video, I want to do another little shipping guide. This is my guide to shipping coffee mugs. Um, if it's something that you've been researching, that you've been looking up on YouTube on how to do, I'm pretty sure you have come across people telling you to put it in an envelope, a padded flat rate envelope. And I don't do that. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I don't care if the mug will arrive safely 100 out of 100 times. It's not something um, that I would do. I'm all about efficient shipping and shipping the cheapest way possible, but I don't um, do that at the expense of being professional with shipping. And no matter how ingenious you may think it is to put a coffee mug in an envelope, um, I can guarantee you the buyer will not think it's ingenious. They won't think it's cute. They're going to think that... Uh, you're lazy or that uh, their item was risked, risked uh, being damaged in shipping. And you really don't save that much by putting it in the envelope instead of just putting it in a regular box. So I want to show you guys how I ship coffee mugs and we'll go ahead and get one all packaged up in this video. And to me, this is the best way to do it. So hopefully it helps a lot of you guys out with um, shipping coffee mugs. So first thing is I wanted to just quote you a few prices and these are the retail prices what you would pay if you went into the post office not the commercial base that you pay when you're using eBay labels or commercial plus if you're a top rated seller so it's not the actual number figure um, I'm worried about but it is the um, just the difference in the two numbers. So if you look at the retail rate at a padded flat rate, doing it that other method, is $5.95. And most of the coffee mugs I ship, I can ship them at the one pound rate. And at the one pound rate, your cheapest one and two zones is only $5.60. The third zone is $5.70. And the fourth zone is $5.85. So the first four zones are actually cheaper this way rather than the um, padded flat rate way. And for, you know, depending on your location, that can affect a lot of people. I'm in the Midwest, so whether I'm shipping west, east, north, south, um, probably two thirds of the country is one of the first four, four zones for someone like me. Worst case scenario, this method at a one pound rate will cost you $6.95. And that's a dollar more, but like I said, that is worst case scenario. So, um, And this works for most coffee mugs. And I'm going to throw some numbers out just so you guys get an idea of how I do this. Um, I wrap the coffee mug in one layer of bubble wrap. And then the other packaging material I use is packing peanuts because it is your lightest option. And... The weight is very important on the coffee mugs because you don't want them to get to the two pound rate because in that instance it does get a little more expensive. So if you do it the way that I show you in this video, then the maximum weight of the coffee mug by itself without any packaging material, anything, just the coffee mug is 12.4 ounces. So just remember that when you're weighing your coffee mug, when you're getting ready to list it, if it's 12.4 ounces or less, it can ship at the one pound rate in the method that I'm about to show you. If it's over 12.4 ounces, the next best option, the way I go, is using one of these. And that's the Regional A box. If you don't know how to use regional boxes, I have a video on that. Um, I'll do an annotation or a link in the description below. And that's your next option if it's over 12.4 ounces. And that'll ship basically at the two pound rate in uh, that instance. So also any tool I use in this video, I'll have a link in the description below if it is something that you would be interested in. Any tool, supplies, whatever shows up in this video will be in the description below. So let's get into packaging this coffee mug. And what do I have? I have uh, over the hill when the only thing hot is the coffee, right? Okay. So first let's weigh it. We want to make sure that it is under or at 12.4 ounces. 
sure you guys can't read that. But it is 11.8, so it will be under one pound when I get all done. And the reason I mentioned that you have to, if these numbers only work if you're doing it the exact way I do it, is because your other option would be instead of using packing peanuts to use newspaper, you could crumple up newspaper and throw it in there. Uh, it's just it's heavier, so your weights would be different. It's something you would have to play with in that instance. So first thing I'm going to do is wrap it in one layer of bubble wrap. And I have this roll a bubble wrap that's perforated every 12 inches. So we're just going to go ahead and rip that. Wrap up this coffee mug. Of course, this one is a little too big to fit, so we'll put a little scrap piece in there. The bubble wrap isn't. 100% necessary, but just offers a little bit more protection for your item. If you don't have bubble wrap, if you're really close to the weight and you want to try and make it work, you could go without the bubble wrap and save two to four, maybe two tenths of an ounce. Okay, so we got it wrapped up, a little bit of bubble wrap. Now, the box I use, this box right here. You can get it from USPS.com. They call it their shoe box. And obviously it is way too big how it is now. So we are going to customize it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tape that. Okay, once you have the one side taped, get your tape measure and you are going to measure seven and a quarter inches up. So seven and a quarter inches. Then I am going to take my handy dandy multi-tool cutter. We're just going to split the seams here. You can also use a razor knife if you don't have a cutter like this or don't want to use this cutter. But this thing is just really slick. I really like it. All right. So then we need to cut it lengthwise. Okay, so we have our cut down box. Now you want to cut the seam coming from the open end, the top there, and you're going to come down two and a half inches. And these are going to be the the flaps for the closure of your box. So we will make another cut. Two and a half. Now this is my little box cutter tool and what this does is it perforates the inside of the box so that you can get a nice straight line on these flaps. Um, it's more important for bigger boxes but it'll work for something like this also. So I'll first find the depth of it right here. I want to match my bottom, that black line that I was just hiding right there. So you 
Put it on top. Get it lined up just where you want it. Lock in the wheel. We're going to perforate the inside of the box. So we line that up. You can see that on that top edge. And you're just scoring the inside of the box. Go around all four sides. And now you're going to have a nice clean fold exactly where you wanted it. It makes it real nice and easy. And if I cut a little straighter, that would uh, close just nicely. So you got your box all ready, all set. Now you need your packing peanuts. I just do enough just to cover the bottom a little bit. And throw our coffee mug in there. Fill the rest of the bag up with coffee or packing peanuts. Be careful around the handle. Make sure to get packing peanuts so that the outer edge of the handle is not up against the side of the box. You want some packing peanuts there. Then make sure to add your packing slip. And we would close up the box. Tape that shut. You can see it's not going anywhere. It's not making any noises. And let's see what it weighs. And it weighs one pound exactly. So that is your limit, the 12.4 ounces. That is how I ship my coffee mugs. Also, one quick thing. Make sure with the coffee mugs to slap on a fragile sticker. Um, honestly, the fragile stickers have absolutely no purpose um, when it comes to the post office. When it comes to your item arriving safely, it really doesn't matter because machines handle these packages more than anything else. They go down conveyor belts, they get slammed into by other packages, whether you have a fragile sticker on it or not, but buyers appreciate the sticker. I've had people complain, even when the item wasn't damaged, that I should have put a fragile sticker on the box. So... It's really cheap to buy a whole roll of a hundred of these things, so I just slap them on any box that could potentially, possibly be considered fragile. So anyways, guys, that is how I ship my coffee mugs. If, you, if it didn't make the weight and you had to go to the next size up, I'd use the regional A box I so, showed you, and I'd do this same method. But in that instance, you don't have to worry about weight once you're into a regional box, so you could just use newspaper if you want to save your packing peanuts. Um, for another item down the road. So make sure to give this video a like. If you like shipping videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out my shipping video playlist. Like I said, I have the regional rate video and how to use regional rate boxes and a guide to shipping clothing also. So check those out. And thanks for watching, guys.